Good evening, this is Eddie from the Balrogs and Bagginses YouTube channel and today I'm going to be showing you how I create my characters for Mithrog by Varg Vikanes. So over a year ago I made a character creation video and um, let me upset that video lasted quite a long time, perhaps just under an hour. Hopefully this one will be a little bit shorter. Um, yeah, so I mean for the past year I've been playing Mifrog um, pretty regularly, uh, mostly most Saturdays with um, a local group of um, friends here in Bilbao. So um, yeah, the uh, the actual book itself it's still in very decent condition. Um, a little bit of wear and tear here it's with the cover, but um, I mean it's been used so much over the past year so that's pretty much to be expected um, and here I've got some of the other booklets uh, coming Deus Ex Machina, Travels and Treasures and Curses and Gifts um, really I think these four booklets are the most useful ones for when you start playing Mythrog or when you want to get into myth mastering uh, I mean of I would say it's probably a good idea to buy all of them, but with these four, you've got all that you need to at the beginning anyway. Um, so for this, for this character creation, I've got some D6 dice, a uh, D20, D8, and a D4. I'll need the D8 and a D20 for when I roll for my character's birthday in uh, Curses and Gifts. And also the D4 if I choose to roll some character flaws, which which I think I will do anyway. So here we've got the uh, the Mifrog character sheet. I've got my name here, and my character's name will be Ayak. So I've chosen the uh, the gender already. I mean, you you can roll that randomly depending on um, on the um, on the race that you that you roll up with, uh, which is here all the species. Um, so let's do that now, so let's see what race my character will be, so I'm going to roll 3 to 6, and I've got a, uh, a 9, so he's just going to be a standard native Fulean, so I will write that in here now, so let's put native Fulean, okay, there you can see that right there, native Fulean. So yeah, as you can see, um, the likelihood is that you will roll a native Fulean. Uh, you can of course roll a, an Elfborn, a Wood Elf, or a Godfathered Goddessborn character, or even a Fairling. Um, much harder, of course. And here we've got the um, other races in the game, the Arby, the represented by the Darkling and the Weaklings, and Commission, the Forest. Um, I'd recommend that you don't play RB or commissions, especially um, at the beginning when you play Mifrog, I'll uh, get a good feeling for the game playing as as um, Fulean characters, and then perhaps you might want to have a go at playing as a commission or a an RB if there is some kind of campaign or maybe a one shot that um, allows for that. Okay, so let's turn over uh, again. Here we've got a bit yes more in-depth descriptions about the uh, the different races. Okay, so going over to page 8, so we've got a gender, so I've already done that. I've chosen a uh, male. Um, I mean, I think it's it's totally fine if you do choose your uh, character's gender, but if you really just want to go straight down the line, then just roll for it. That's completely fine. Okay, so next thing we're going to do now is get the attributes of the, uh, the characters. Okay, so um, what's recommended in Mifrog is that you roll twice for each attribute and then choose the uh, the highest score. So the reason why you, you roll twice is because it represents, let's say, like the genes from the father and uh, the mother. Yeah, so what I normally do is I just roll twice for each one, go for the highest. Uh, some people roll... Um, six times and then note the scores down and then allocate them 
to whichever attribute they want. Um, you can do that of course, but I prefer just to go start straight down the line. So, uh, yep, six main attributes in Mithrog. Of course we've got Charisma, Constitution, Dexterity, Intelligence, Strength and Will Power. Of course the value is represented in uppercase and a modification in lower case but with a uh, capital uh, letter at the beginning. Okay, here are the values for the modifications. Um, it's pretty standard in a lot of games in fact. Um, so only when you've got a value of uh, 13 will you start to get a plus one to modification. So you can see it goes all the way from negative five if you have a one or, or less and up to 21 giving you a, a plus five. Okay, again here we've got a bit more uh, in-depth racial modifications depending on uh, the race and uh, the gender. Uh, so for example if you are a native Fulean male um, you've got a pretty much a plus zero across all of the, uh, the attributes for when you roll your character. Female however gets a plus two to her charisma but a minus two to her strength. Um, the reason behind that is, you know, it's fairly logical. In fact, it's you know, uh, women are you know, much more tend to be much more beautiful, and uh, males are generally stronger. But, and you can see here some more racial modifications. Okay, well let's roll now for the charisma of my character. So first roll. We have a, uh, a 10 and a 7. So we will go with 10. That was my character, Iric, a plus 0. Next, let's go with Constitution. So that's an 8. Here we've got a 13, so that's pretty decent. And gives me a plus one dexterity. So we have a nine. The second roll is an eleven. Intelligence fourteen. So that's a good roll. Second roll is a seven. So obviously we'll go with the. 14. So one of the parents was much more intelligent than the other. Um, strength, so that's decent, that's a 15. And 14. So we can assume that both parents were strong. We'll go over to 15, of course, giving me a plus one there. And willpower, we have a uh, 12. And a 13. So that gives me a plus one there to my will. So low stats. Uh, yep, not too bad at the beginning here. Got a plus one to the modification of four values. Constitution, intelligence, strength and will. So I'll be, I'll be able to look at these values um, shortly to see what kind of... Uh, character role I can choose or go with. That also depends on my character's life stance. Okay, what I'm going to do next is, because uh, I've just rolled for the attributes, I'm going to roll now for my character's birthday date using curses and gifts. <clears throat> As that may give my character a plus one, I mean it will give me a plus one to a certain stats and that might allow me to be a uh, character role that I uh, might not otherwise be able to be. So, so here we have curses and uh, gifts. Just trying to record this using the camera with one hand, it's a little bit awkward. Um, bear with me a second. Okay. So you can see we've got the uh, 
different months in winter, spring, summer and autumn of course. I think it's on the previous page which I need to find. Right, so first of all yeah, we need to roll a D20 for the season and that will give me a plus one in one of uh, five possible uh, attributes there. As you can see, you can't get a dex uh, plus one, but you can get the other five uh, character attributes. So let's roll a d20 now, and that is a, a 10. So that's uh, born in summer, so that will be a, a plus one to my character's will. So I'm going to write this at this top. Yeah. Now let's choose. Let's well not choose. Let's roll for the uh, the actual summer month, as you can see here. So this will be a D six. That is a six. So summer month there is uh, Albahaimash. Good. So that is the uh, the light elf world. It's a nice. Month. So let's write this in here. Albahimash. Yeah, for the, the light elves. Of course, the uh, Swat Albahimash is the uh, the dark elf world, otherwise known as uh, Gemliwa. Now, let's roll to see which day my character was born on. So here we need d8s. That's an eight, so that's uh, Saturday. So that is the uh, the day of Heimedal I think that's more or less right. So we can write it in here. Okay. So you can see here is a footnote for that, also known as the, the cleaning day, the traditional name after what families in Fule normally do that day, but often because of their respect for Heimat Alfash. They clean the house and then themselves to be able to meet the next week clean and free from guilt. So we can now roll on the, uh, the exact birth date. Um, so for Saturday my character can either be born on the uh, 7th, 14th, the 21st, or the 28th. So let's roll a d8 to find out. So that's an 8. So my character will be um, born on the Saturday the 28th. Interesting. So that's uh, the moon phase of the waning de death. So, uh, yeah. Right at the end of the month. Of course, in Thule, there are 13 months of the, uh, the year. Each month has 13 days, and then New Year's Day has an extra day, giving you a total of 365 days. So there we go. Um, I should have a rubber handy, but I don't. But uh, but this will give me willpower of uh, 14, so I can just quite easily write it in and change it later to make it a bit neater. Okay, good. So um, now let's work out the, uh, the height of my character using this chart here. Um, so you can see here we've got the native Fulean, so it'll be 58 plus 4d6 and that will be uh, inches. Then later you know you can convert that into uh, into feet. So uh, an inch is about something like 2.47 centimeters. Okay, so on dice we have uh, a 14. So let's add it to 58. That will be uh, 72. That's a height of 72. So that's uh, fairly decent, fairly tall. Not tremendously tall, but probably quite uh, average. Okay, now we can work out the weight of my character. And this will also determine if, if we have a, a size modifier or not. Okay. So the height is added to 46 
multiply multiplied by three plus strength multiplied strength modifier multiplied by ten. So I do have a strength modifier of modifier plus one. So that will give me uh, forty six multiplied by three plus ten for the strength modifier and plus forty for being a Thulean uh, male. So let's do that now. Let's roll. 46 and we have a total of 15 on the dice multiply by 3 45 plus 10 55 plus 40 95 so let's just write that down here so now we add both we add the strength to the weight so the strength to that roll there and that will give you the uh, the weight okay of my of my character so that will be 167 pounds, so I can write that in here. Now we can check on the size description table, and as you can see here, my character is just makes it to be above average, so he's 167. Okay, so that gives you a size modifier of plus one. Um, now, of course, there are some benefits to having a, uh, a positive size modifier. Also, some di some disadvantages. Now, the main advantages come when your character's in uh, in melee. Um, the higher, I mean, the, the bigger your character is, the more he weighs. Uh, the harder it is to, to stun or to basically just to get a successful shock roll on the uh, on your character because you have to add the size modifier to those rolls. Um, it's also harder to kill a character out, outright with a uh, by bleeding effect if you have a very high um, size modifier. I mean most Fulaeans are probably going to be around plus zero, plus one. You might get somewhere up to plus two but it's you know it's you know pretty much impossible that you're going to get one above 255 pounds. Um, so, I mean, having a negative size modifier has its drawbacks as well. I mean, it makes your character easy to to stun or to knock down or unconscious in combat. Also, makes you it's easier for your character to to, to bleed out as well. Uh, the plus is that the plus thing is that well, the, the advantage I should say is that it's harder to hit your character. Uh, with missile weapons, so I mean, I generally prefer my characters to have a, uh, a plus one or you know, preferably a plus two to a size modifier. Okay, all good so far. Um, okay, so social class. Um, you've got some de some information here about the social classes here. Um, and the colours they stick to. Now, um, most Fulaeans are noble. I think it's about 75 to 80 percent, I believe. Then you have a small percentage which are free men. And then, of course, you will also have some outlaws. So, uh, for the sake of this um, um, Character creation. I will choose uh, to be a noble. Okay. So those are the uh, the color colors there. Like, as, as you know, it's like the cast in society. So you've got blue, white, and purple. I suppose they're the most well, the more noble, more regal color colors. Uh, yeah. I mean, if you have, if you look at a lot of uh, important figures, maybe in Greek or Roman. Ancient society, you know, would often have uh, purple and white. Okay, so let's now go for our birthplace and life stance. Of course, the, uh, the birthplace of your character highly affects the life stance. The more southerly regions in Thule tend to be more of a more religious or satru life stance, and uh, once you get up to the more um, regions such as Prefeneo and uh, Scantinario, the tribes tend to be more 
not cedar, so more of the like, traditional, um, more of the older lifestyles. Okay, so as you can see here, some regions such as uh, Irulia, for example, it's pretty much split down the middle, 50-50 uh, chance of being either or Satru or Seder. Yeah, as you can see now. Okay, so I'm going to cast a D20 now to see which region I'm from. So that is an, uh, an 18, so that's uh, Troskenia. So that's the right is in here. Okay, that's otherwise known as the uh, the Tower Gate. Okay, so as you can see here, um, unless I roll a six and a d6 now, my character will be uh, also so he will be uh, a religious life pass. So I got a five and a dice, so my character will be also through. Um, which is you now interesting for role-playing purposes, of course, um, and uh, it opens up a few more characters to you. In fact, uh, you know, of course, if you have a Seder uh, life stance, and you can't be char uh, character roles such as uh, berserks or rangers, and a few of us, which we'll look at uh, in a in a moment. Now. Cultural background. So, as I'm from uh, Troskenia, let's have a look here. This will allow me to choose two out of the following three skills to be trained skills. So, I can either have acting, social skills, or world law. Um, so, I am actually going to choose now uh, world law as trained and social skills so I'm going to I've marked both of these down here as trained in that column there okay so so I've chosen those two now uh, now let's roll for the age of my uh, character so that will be a straight up 15 plus d3 so I've got a uh, one on the dice so my character is 16 years of Age. So for native few loans, you have to uh, multiply the constitution value by 5 to give you your maximum age. So minus 13, so that will give me uh, 65 maximum age. Um, of course, that can go up or down in the game depending on how your character develops. You might um, when you level up at certain levels, you might add more to your to your con, which will change your character's um, maximum age and possibly some modifications as well. It's also possible that your character will lose constitution. Um, you know, it might be due to a serious injury or effects of poison or, or something along those lines. But um, no need to worry about that now. So yeah, a character starts the game with one talent, so this is where you can write your talents, a space for eight, which is uh, more than enough at the beginning anyway. And if you do start an adventure with a sibling in game, so, you know, such as say, a brother or a sister, or maybe a cousin or a family member, it does allow you to choose an extra talent. Um, it's just basically a reward for doing that, uh, as it... You know, it just makes sense in Mithrak that you would go out to adventure with somebody who's very uh, close to you, such as a sibling or or another family member, um, rather than, you know, going out as a level one character adventure with uh, completely unknown characters. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it makes more sense for um, role-playing purposes anyway, and uh, perhaps... Uh, Immersion to to uh, to play the game with your in-game siblings or relations. Okay, so let's. I'll actually I'm going to choose the talent once I've decided on my character role. So um, so here we've got the character roles on page fifteen. So we've got civilian, warrior, stalker, trickster, uh, magante, or maynard, 
Berserk Valkyrie and Ranger, of course. Sorcerer, you know, I can't be a sorcerer, of course, because uh, I'm not Seder life stance. So, uh, yeah, if you go over to uh, page 16, it will tell you um, the available character roles according to your race or species. So, I mean, for natives here, pretty much open to all of them. Uh, of course, some are so specific to uh, genders, such as uh, Berserk to uh, you know for males and uh, Valkyries to to females and uh, yeah, uh, Bards can be both male or female. Then you have Bacantis and the female equivalent, which is the uh, the Mayonet. Yeah, pretty straightforward there. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So you may. I've actually just noticed here. Yeah, yeah. So there's no female warriors, so that's also worth uh, taking into account. Okay, so so I'm looking at my stats now again. So I've got a attribute, sorry, value charisma ten, constitution of thirteen, dex eleven, intelligence fourteen, strength fifteen, and a will of fourteen. So let's say if I wanted to be a berserk, I wouldn't be able to basically because I don't have enough uh, charisma or strength. Too bad. Um, can't be a bard either because I, again, I lack charisma by three. Also, can't be a uh, bacante. So you can, you know, you can see already that charisma is quite an important value when it comes to uh, all sat through uh, uh, character roles, you know, prerequisites. Um, I can't even be a ranger. I mean, I don't have enough charisma there. Uh, the other attributes are fine, but again, that charisma of ten is uh, is uh, not doing me any favors. So let's have a look at the other ones. Um, yep, yeah, I can be a stalker or a trickster. I can be a warrior. Have sufficient strength. Uh, I could even choose to be a civilian. Of course, being a civilian. It's quite good for, for role playing purposes. Uh, civilians are able to choose four character roles at their own free will. Um, whereas for all of the other roles, they are already set in stone. So I think what I'm going to do is um, my character looks like he'll be a fairly decent warrior because I've got a strength of 15. Can probably bring that up to 16 uh, within a level or two. So warriors, they will get they get a character roll. Uh, they get a total of six. I've marked it down, and they get uh, acrobatics, melee, and missile. Okay, riding, seamanship. And stamina. Okay, so as you can see here, I've marked those down in the correct column. So that gives my character a uh, starting total of eight skills, six of which are character roles and two are trained. Those are world law and social skills. Um, so that's not too bad at all, actually, and I, I can choose my my character's uh, talent now, so and as he's a warrior, um, the one that I would recommend for warriors at the beginning is the fighter talent, that gives you a plus one to your melee. It also enables your character to attack more than once per round, um, which can be pretty useful. Um, um, but you know, each attack will be at a, uh, an, a um, will be reduced. So if you attack twice, both rolls will be at a, a negative one. And yeah, um, so let's write that in here. Fighter for my character's talent. Okay, so that's all looking good so far. Um, 
course, start with level 1 and 0 experience. Let's write in warrior here. So, all of that at the top is complete. Got my attributes done, the talents done. Untrained, trained, and character role skills, they're all done. So, let's have a look at this here now. The character role skills mod equals level. Uh, yeah, as you can see here, the level halved uh, up to maximum of five, and if it's trained, so the level, yeah, and this time by a quarter, to up to maximum of four. So now, as my character is level one, if I half that, obviously it gives me a point five, and for this you round down, but for unless it's a voiced other things you often round up but for uh, trained and character role skills you have to uh, to round down so this will only give me a uh, this will give me a zero for for both so when I'm using at level one when I'm using either a character role or a trained skill it'll give me a zero now once my character gets to uh, level two then I'll get a plus one for my character role skills. Um, now, in order to get a plus one to my train skill mod, my character will have to reach level four. Okay? Yeah? Just by then it'll be four. By divided by quarter, so I'll give you one. Yeah? So, uh, and that's what you need to get one with your trained skills. So. That's how it works. At a level uh, three, my character will have a plus one for character rolls. Level four, he'll get a plus two, so on. So at level ten, by level ten, he'll have a uh, his maximum of plus five to his character roll skills. So that's hopefully not too uh, too complicated. Hopefully you can you can understand that. Um, now let's have a look. At the valuable valuables that uh, start the game. So, depending on your social class, some start with more uh, ounces of silver than, than others. So, as my character is a noble, noble, he'll get three, three plus three, six ounces of silver. So, let's see how many shekels he has. So, that's a total of ten plus three. So that will give him 13 ounces of silver to start with. Not too bad. That should give, that should be enough to uh, to be able to to equip my warrior um, with most things that he will need. You know, like uh, such as maybe some basic armor, perhaps uh, maybe a spear and a shield and some other uh, other equipment. Okay. Right. So so far so good. Um, skill section here, and yeah, so uh, right, okay, so let's go over to the languages known to my character, knows only Fulean. He has no knowledge of Commission, Arabi, or any otherwise unknown languages. Let's have a look at the toughness section here, so uh. Uh, my character's got a zero all the way down f for uh, all of these uh, cold, electricity, heat, and uh, physical. Um, some species, I think it might be the, uh, the weaklings or the darklings, I'm not sure which, but they get a plus one to, uh, to heat. Okay, so we've got a tired, weary, exhausted mod. Now, um, Stamina points. Let's see how many stamina points I start with. So the level bonus, the uh, zero here reflects if it's uh, untrained. This quarter if it's trained, and this is if it's a uh, character roll. Okay. So I have it as character roll, so I can mark that here. This side you do round up, by the way. So for this one, um, so I've got an eight plus my con modifier of plus one, so it gives me a nine. 
And my level bonus uh, is one. You know, it goes to a half, but you round up, so that would give me a starting stamina of uh, 10. So that's not too bad. Now, here we've got level bonus. So it's a one. Or a two if you are, I think it's a two if you are a warrior or a berserker Valkyrie. So um, let's mark this here. So for every level, you get a plus two to your HP. So, so we're looking at the uh, the con in the uh, the upper case. So that is the um, the Balu. So that is thirteen plus my strength modifier one, so it gives me fourteen. Size, I've got a size of plus one, that gives me fifteen. Level bonus, so that'd be two. So that gives my gives me a starting HP of seventeen. Not too bad. Of course, that can increase quite quickly if you uh, when you know as soon as you level up and perhaps you choose uh, to level up maybe in your constitution or uh, or something along those lines. Um, Disease and poison mods, so again that's using your con modifier, I've got a plus one right now racial mod there, so I'll give me a disease mod resistance of plus one. Um, poison, I get a level plus one X of my side size, so I'll have plus one for disease and plus two to my poison resistance. So that's not too bad. Now, favor points. Um, now, even though my character is uh, Orsathru, he doesn't have a religious tradition. So, you know, that's a uh, minus five to your untrained. Charisma is uh, plus zero, so um, he's not really um, significant as a character. He's only level one, he hasn't done anything in out in Thule so the gods are not really going to pay too much attention to him so he's got, you know he's got a he's not really going to start with any further uh, favor points so I'm going to put that as a zero there so he's you know, in order for me to to gain favor points I will need to choose religious tradition as a trained skill okay then that will give me a zero and then, you know, maybe I might get a, a a con modifier at some stage, okay? So, I mean, if, if I only keep it as, say, a train skill, then my character will have to advance quite a lot in the levels in order to get some uh, some favor points and to be, you know, to be more recognized by, uh, by the gods. So, um, so the favorite deity, um, now... My character was born on uh, Saturday, so I'm going to actually choose Haimad al as my character's uh, favorite deity. Okay, as you can see, Haimad al right. And of course, you can choose friend deities and yeah, but I'm going to leave it as it is for now. That's we're good to go with that. Um, special abilities and character roll advantages. Uh, yep, there are some for a warrior, which we can find on page seventeen. So, uh, yeah. So here we have here uh, for a warrior at a level one, he can jog rather than just walk with guard up when part of a formation. It can charge, which is very useful. It can attack with a very long reaching weapons from the second line of, of a column or square made of only warriors or berserks. Okay. Good. So, um, so I can put here, you know, let's say, jog with guard up and can actually charge. Uh, charging gives you a bit of an advantage uh, in combat if you are at, I think it's more than 20 feet away and perhaps no more than your standard tempo or along those lines um, for running anyway. Um, so that's a 
you need you know you, you need to be at least you can't be you know you can't really charge at a character who's only five feet away. You need to pick up a bit of momentum, so you have to be at least twenty feet away, and that will give you some advantages. It's uh, you know to your OV and and to your damage if you're able to successfully um, hit your opponent. But you know you don't need to worry about that for now anyway. Um, Okay, so the next thing we need to do now is um, is to basically buy some equipment on the uh, flip side of the character roll, sorry, the character sheet, and and work out our combat statistics, and then we're good to go. So uh, I will do that as soon as I recharge my camera over now. Okay, so fully equipment for my character. I think I bought a fur shirt, gives him a plus one to his AV, a cap, gives you another plus one there, a minus one to your perception and missile, um, a medium mind shield, gives you a plus two to defensive melee and to your missile, a winged spear, which is a pretty good all-round balanced weapon, d8 plus 1 damage, uh, plus 1 to the cut, minus 1 to the shock. Okay, that's a short sex as well, minus 2 to the cut, plus, so it should be plus 2 to the shock. Um, And here I bought a couple of torches, but here are the cost and the weight, uh, a tinder box for starting fires, bandages, times two, a water skin, just one, uh, starts at a weight of one MA because it's empty, but that can go up to nine pounds, uh, and a bit of food, bread and, and meat, he's pretty much good to go, he's got a one ounce of silver left and some linen clothes and finally here for the OVME so he gets a plus three and that's because he gets a plus one because of his fighter melee talent and he has plus one because of his strength modifier and he gets plus one because he's using a shield and weapon combo um, OVMI is basically it's a flat zero. DVME is plus 14, so he gets uh, again plus one because of his fight to talent, plus one because of his strength, and plus two for the shield uh, bonus. And I put in brackets there 15, that's with dodge included. Dodge is plus one. And the DVMI is plus 11. Um, he gets plus two because of his shield, but it um, loses one because of his size bonus, so that takes him down to 11. Uh, and that would actually be uh, 12 with, with Dodger as well. Okay. And that's it. Total AV of 2. It means you, any uh, characters would need to inflict at least 3 points of damage on him in order to get a... Uh, proper good hit and to roll on the cut and shock. Okay, well I hope this uh, video has been useful. Um, I'll put up some links as well after the video if you, if you want to um, check out the, um, the Facebook group which Jeff and I run at the moment. Uh, Jeff Cape from uh, God Emperor Leto 2 and I'll post up some other links in the description as well. Thanks. Bye-bye.